I fell in with a really good crowd of people that also had this affinity for Hong Kong action. And when I say Hong Kong action, brother, I'm talking about the stuff from the late, late 70s to the late 80s, maybe even early 90s, you know, like, and then it, well, for me, it wasn't quite as special until Donnie Yen shows up later, you know, when he was there. But with the stuff that Chan directed in the 80s for me, that's all holy grail shit, bro. That's like, you know, for me, and Sammo Hung too, they were just, because they not just took control of the choreography, but they took control of the cameras and the editing. I mean, listen, we owe a lot more than people give credit to, to what they were doing in the 80s. I mean, you know, in general, cinema, you know, you it, it was the same. Like, remember the fight? You saw the cowboy fights. You know, you know what it is. And even the old Japanese movies, I love them. But it's not, there's something different about that that 80s, it's something clicked in the 80s. And that's my favorite era, bro. That's my heyday, dog. Do you think that it plays a little bit more like a song than the Japanese or the Westerns? Because those are the Japanese style and the Western style at the time. It's kind of like two wrecking balls, right? Like one is going to kind of, and then one, but it's like with the Hong Kong style, it's like two guys run in and make a song. Yeah. And it's not, I mean, but I, I really believe it's, it's a combination of, People that were doing the action were directing the action. So the action became the star. Does that make sense? In the in Hollywood movies, the directors then, not now, but then were so arrogant that they believed that they could do anything. And they didn't think that it's important. Like, oh, no, you got to throw a punch and tackle him. They didn't understand. You know, even after the Bruce Lee you saw after Enter the Dragon when he died, there's a wave of, like, in uh, You Only Live Twice, or there's a couple of Bond films. There's a a bunch of knockoff stuff that came out that they were they were trying they were trying to but they didn't do it right they didn't know how to do it it was the 80s bro when chan came you know the late 70s the latest latest 70s early, that's when he him samo that whole crew came together in my opinion and took control of the direction they directed it they starred in it they shot it they cut it and then they you know they they just it was just all encompassing and because it was their creation and it came from them, for me, that's what made it next level. And listen, they were doing shit back then where like now on these movies we work on, we can say, oh, let's just fix it in post. You couldn't do that back then. Even when I started in 90, you couldn't just say, oh, we'll fix it in post. You had to figure out how to do it in camera. Like if there's a wire, you got to make sure the background is painted in a way that you can't see it in camera. Like they've got to light it and background it in a way with straw, whatever. You had to be clever. You couldn't just, you know, I think... Too much CGI makes for lazy filmmakers. And, you know, for me, it's always my, I don't want to knock the, CG, the visual effects because it's always an integral part of what we do. But I think it should complement the action and the action shouldn't complement the CGI. We're not making cartoons or making action movies. But um, yeah, man, I would say that the Chinese had it mastered first from my perspective. Bruce Lee starts this wave. Holy smoke. The only movie he directed was Return of the Dragon. You can see a lot of his philosophy. Dragon whips his tail. You know, like, I loved it. Because I'm sure he, I, we all admire him as one of the founding fathers and also as a, as a badass cultural icon, you know, um, all of the above. And a, and a trippy philosopher, hippie type, too, at the same time that people probably didn't know about. You know, that I got to talk to Chuck Norris and Bob Wall, the late Bob Wall, you know, uh, uh, Benny the Jet, Jet Urquidez. I met a lot of people that work with him, Jun Chung, uh, people that met him, and, and I would always pick their brains about him. So he starts this wave, you know, and it's impressive. But you can tell that his filmmaking hadn't hit pay dirt yet. He didn't only made freaking four or five movies, four and a half. Now Chan starts as a stuntman. He starts his background and works his way as stuntman. And I got to tell you something, like a guy that's come up on in the stunt business for... 20 plus years, when you're working on 15, 12, 15 films a year and 18 episodes of TV, you're just going, marching around from set to set, working with different directors and different crews. If you're, if you're woke, paying attention, which you should be, there's no way you can't learn a shit ton from these people. Chan had come up and took the stairs, crawled first, walked. He'd worked on probably... 100 films, you won't find it on IMDb, but he probably worked on 100 films before he even acted in his first movie, you know, because they were churning out so much work after Bruce Lee died. They were probably doing, you know, 
20 day shoots on a movie and they were probably bouncing him and Hong and Sammo Hong and those guys. So you can imagine by the time they got their shot at it, they were so good. Cause I've, I've got to work with a lot of the Hong Kong people. Like I worked in Hong Kong the first time in, in 97. It was Corey Yun and then Richard Yun, Yun Tak, Yun Kuei. Listen, there's so many that I got to work with. And I was so grateful. Now, I gotta tell you, it's not easy working there back then. They was hard on you. Like they, you know, this they'll be yelling at each other in Cantonese and figure out a couple moves, and you had to watch because they were gonna say, This is you, this is you right here. And then you gotta jump in and you gotta get it. And or they'll be like, ah, and they'll talk, you know, like and you feel like a dick. And so you had to be on point. And it was, and it's tough love there. The Cantonese and the Chinese, they're hard on one another. Like it's like they're you're you're expected if you get wrecked, no matter how hard, get your ass up, you know, unless you're done. It was tough love and it was tough. I remember Corey Yun told me. JJ, you're going to do a Weeboo stunt. And I was like, what's that? And he goes, after stunt, Weeboo, 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 Weeboo. And I was like, oh, cool. He said, don't worry. I got a Russian boy who looks just like you, can replace you. Never forget <laughs> that. Never forget that.